for the people did a model of the brain, right? Hmm? So this is the model of the brain. Now, for certain reasons, we cannot accept this to be a model of the brain. Okay. So we have redone it, and we will see what and how exactly a human brain should be looking like. How it should be looking like at the at the primary phase. Now, the cortex, and there is a stem to it, the stem or the primitive part of it. So. Let's say we call this as the brain stem and we call this as the, as the cortex, two parts of the basic brain. So brain would be having two basic parts. So in these two basic parts, the brain stem would be consisting of, let's say, these basic elements, the midbrain, the pons, the medulla. So these are the basic parts which the brain stem should be having. So it should look like this. And this stalk or the stem of the brain goes and fits into a cortex. Okay? This is too long because this goes into the spinal cord below. We'll have it like this. So it goes and fits into a cortex. Or the basic look of a brain, human brain should be cortex and brain stem. So we fit the brain stem to its place it should look like this and the brain actually is occupied in the cranial cavity and as we all know the distinction between human beings and the other primates is that this particular forehead is very much depressed in them so it has come out so it should be visible like this okay so it should a brain a human brain should look like this first of all so this particular brain is not looking like this so, on the prima facie, we would be rejecting it. The second thing is that we are bilaterally symmetrical. That means, whatever is this side is also present this particular side. Because so here you can see, it is divided into two symmetrical halves. Same thing this side, and the same thing on the opposite side. And the second thing based upon which we cannot consider this to be the model of a brain is that it is lacking out symmetry. The shape the symmetry and the basic structures that is the cortex and the brain stem are lacking out. The cortex would be having four visible lobes. The four visible lobes, one in yellow, known as the frontal lobe. The other in red, known as the temporal lobe. The third in orange, known as the occipital lobe. And the fourth in pink, known as the parietal lobe. So how do these lobes get distinct? Now we know that the brain has just grown up to an excess amount that the cranium could not accommodate it. So there are certain convolutions which have happened out. There are certain major depressions or convolutions or sulcus which has come up. And the major sulcus which define out the boundaries of the different hemispheres are the sulcus or known as the Ronaldic fissure and the lateral sulcus known as the Sylvian fissure. So the Ronaldic fissure and the sylvian fissure are the major fissures. The third sulcus which is also important is known as the parieto occipital sulcus. So we have three sulcus. Sulcus 1, sylvian, sulcus 2, central, sulcus 3, parieto occipital. So three sulcus done. These three sulcus would be helping us to identify out the 1, 2, 3 and 4 lobes. So below the sylvian fissure and till the parieto occipital sulcus, we have the temporal lobe in red. Correct? So here we have marked out the temporal bone. Very much important for a speech therapist and audiologist. So the temporal lobe has been marked out in red and the temporal bone has been put in clay here. The next is above the sylvian fissure and anterior to the central sulcus we have the frontal lobe so the frontal lobe is in front of the fissure of ronaldo and above the sylvian fissure the third is in pink known as the parietal lobe the parietal lobe is behind the central sulcus above the sylvian fissure and anterior or in front of the parieto occipital sulcus correct so we have the occipital lobe, occiput, occipital lobe, 
frontal bone, frontal lobe, temporal bone, temporal lobe, parietal bone, parietal lobe. So these are the four lobes. They say there is a fifth lobe or the insula which can be identified once the sylvian fissure is opened up. Okay. But these are the four visible lobes and the brain stem. Clear? This is how you make the model of a brain. Then we know there are certain other language areas like the Broca's area, the Wernicke's area, the angular gyrus, the supramarginal gyrus, which are responsible for different functions of the speech. Understood? This is how the model of a brain actually looks like. Thank <laughs> you.